Alright guys, this video is on linear programming word problems. So we're going to take the linear programming process that we learned yesterday and we're going to apply it to real life situations. So yes, me and my buddies, we sit in the teacher's lounge and we come up with the most excruciating word problems we can for you because we love you that much. Alright, let's go with the first one. This first one that we're going to do, by the way, is the first one on the worksheet that I'm going to give you tomorrow in class, so you won't have to redo it um, once you get that worksheet. Now, for each of these problems, you are required to assign variables, establish the objective quantity and constraints, graph it, shade the graph, find the vertices, and solve it. So you have to do all of those things. Alright, first problem. A carpenter makes bookcases in two sizes, large and small. It takes six hours to make a large bookcase and two hours to make a small one. The profit on a large bookcase is $50 and the profit on a small bookcase is $20. The carpenter can spend only 24 hours a week making bookcases and must make at least two of each size per week. How many of each size must be made per week in order to provide maximum profit? All right, so we are going to assign variables first. Um, this last sentence tells us what we need, how many of each size. So we need one variable for the large bookcases, the number of, or the amount of, and one for the amount of small bookcases. So we now have our variables. We need to establish an objective quantity. We're trying to get profit, maximum profit. So let's let the objective quantity be P, which we have to define, P is profit, and then write our objective quantity, P equals, and then the profit is going to be $50 for each large bookcase, so 50x, and $20 for each small bookcase, so plus 20y. So there's your objective statement right there. All right, we need constraints. So let's read this problem again. It takes six hours to make a large bookcase and two hours to make a small one. 6x plus 2y. But he is constrained because he can only spend 24 hours a week. Sorry, I didn't mean to look like I was crossing it out. So we can do less than or equal to 24. We are also constrained to the fact that we must make at least two of each size. So x has to be greater than or equal to 2, and y has to be greater than or equal to 2. That is not one equation. That's two separate lines, two separate inequalities, um, at least two of each size. So we have three constraints to graph. All right, now we're going to graph and shade. All right, I've just scooted everything up um, so I could fit a graph on here. I know that I'm only going to be graphing in the positive quadrant because I'm not going to make negative bookcases. So I've, got, I've gone ahead and drawn my x and y axes here. Now I need to label them. Some of you guys did not label on your last test. You have to label your axes. So I've got my axes labeled. And yeah, y axis is kind of crooked, but that's okay. All right, so now we're going to graph this. Um, 6x plus 2y is less than or equal to 24. I'm going to use the intercept method. The x-intercept, if y was 0, x would be 4. And the y-intercept, if x was 0, would be 12. So, way up here. Alright, so if I connect those dots with a ruler, it will look like this. It's a solid line because it's less than or equal to. And we have a positive y, and it's less than. So we are going to end up shading down on that one, but I'm not going to shade just yet. We still need to put in x is greater than or equal to 2 and y is greater than or equal to 2. All right, so I want to shade above, or actually x is greater than goes to the right of this line, and y is greater than goes above this line. So we want to shade this triangle right here. So we have graphed, we have shaded. The next step is to find the vertices. Our vertices are here, and here, and here. So the first one's pretty easy because we know it's 2, 2. But this one over here isn't as easy. I'm going to label these on the graph, by the way. 2, 2, right there. This one's somewhere in between 2 and 3. So the way to figure it out is to take the equation of the, um, the line that has the slope, the first one, and plug in x equal, I mean y equals 2. 
So we want 6x plus 2 times 2 is less than or equal to 24. If I subtract 4 from 24, I have 6x is less than or equal to 20. 20 divided by 6 is 10 thirds, which is um, 3 and a third. So we have a point at 3 and 1 third, 2. That's that point right there, 3 and 1 third comma 2. And then this point right here, um, it looks like it crosses at 2, 6. Um, we can verify that by plugging in a 2 for x, 6 times 2 plus 2y less than or equal to 24. So 6 times 2 is 12, 24 minus 12 is 12. 2y is less than or equal to 12y is 6, so that point is going to be 2, 6. All right, we found our vertices and we wrote them down. All right, after you find your vertices, we need to um, solve. We have to take each vertex, plug it in to our profit statement and see which one of these combinations gives us the biggest profit. So I'm gonna do that right here. Don't have much space left, but we're going to go 50 times two plus 20 times two gives us a profit of 140. Um, 50 times 3 and a third plus 20 times 2 is going to give us 206 and 2 thirds. This is money, so it would be like $206.67. And the third one, 50 times 2 plus 20 times 6, and that gives us um, 220. So the question is, how many of each size must be made per week in order to provide maximum profit? Well, our maximum profit is 220, so that's 2x's and 6y's. So we're going to write a complete sentence to answer this question, and then we'll be done. So, the answer to this question is, the carpenter must make two large bookcases and six small bookcases each week in order to maximize profit. Okay, this next problem is number three from the worksheet that we're going to do in class tomorrow, so you won't have to do number three tomorrow either. All right, a furniture company makes two kinds of wooden table legs, one plain and one fancy. Each plain leg takes two hours in a lathe and one hour of sanding. And a lathe, if you didn't know, is the thing that spins it to where they can carve it into its um, fancy, you know, shapes. Each fancy leg takes one hour in the lathe and four hours of sanding. The four lathes of s and six sanding machines are used 12 hours a day. Each plain leg nets $3 in profit, and each fancy leg nets $5 in profit. If the company can sell all the table legs it makes, how many of each kind should be produced each day in order to maximize profit? All right, so first thing we're going to do is assign our variables. And it says how many of each kind. So we need X and Y to represent our plain legs and our fancy legs. I'm going to type it because my handwriting is pretty bad. So X will be your amount of plain table legs and Y will be your amount of fancy table legs. All right, we also need an objective quantity. So we know that we are trying to maximize profit, so that means we need a P for profit. And the profit equation, P equals, it says each plain leg is $3 in profit, 3x, and each fancy leg is $5 in profit, 5y. So there's your objective quantity to use later. After we do that, we need to figure out our constraints. So what is this company constrained to? Um, it talks about the lathes, the lathing machines and the sanding machines. And it says each fancy leg takes one hour in the lathe and four hours of sanding. That's not one equation. We don't have one equation for fancy legs because that would be um, Y's in there twice. What we want to do is we have a limitation of sanding machines and we have a limitation of lathes. So we're going to write one for the lathes first. There are four lathes that's used for 12 hours a day. So you have a total of 48 hours of lathing that can happen. Each plain leg 
is two hours in the lathe, so two X. And each fancy leg is one hour in the lathe, so plus one Y. And that has to be less than or equal to the 48 hours that are available of lathing. Some of the, I mean, that happens, you know, consecutively at the same time, but it's 48 total hours worth of lathing. Then for our sanding, the fancy leg, um, sorry, the plain leg is one hour of sanding, 1x. The fancy legs are four hours of sanding, plus 4y. I wrote plus twice, sorry. Um, and that has to be less than or equal to, there's six sanding machines for 12 hours a day, gives us 72 sanding hours. So there's um, two constraints. And then do we have any other constraints? It doesn't say it in the problem, but you always, if they don't say it, you want to include the real world constraints of the fact that we are not going to be able to make negative plain table legs and we are not going to make negative fancy table legs. So x is greater than or equal to zero and y is greater than or equal to zero are two constraints that must be included in this problem. All right, so now we're going to graph these constraints. And we have 2x plus 1y is less than or equal to 48. So that means that the y-intercept on that is 48. Um, so I'm going to count my grid by tens in order to fit 48 right there. And then the x-intercept on this one is going to be 48 divided by 2 is 24. Um, let's see, how far do I need this to go? I'm going to count the bottom by tens as well. So that goes up to 24. We know we're going to shade below this line because it's positive y that's less than but I'm not going to shade yet. I have this other one. 1x plus 4y is less than or equal to 72. So now my y-intercept is 72 divided by 4, which is um, 18. And so that point will go about right there. And then the x-intercept is 72, so I have to go all the way up to 72 on the x-axis, like this. And I'll be shading below this line as well. And then I have x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0, which do have to actually be drawn on there. Even though those are the axes, you still need to draw them on. And I'll be shading to the right of x and above y. So the final shaded area will be this part in here. So we've graphed, we've shaded, we need to find the corners. This one we know was um, 0, 18. This one is obviously 0, 0. This one we know was 24, 0. And then the difficult one is this one right here. Where do those two lines cross? So I need to solve the system of these two lines right here. I'm going to use elimination. So I'm going to go 2x plus 1y. Um, just using equals for this, 48. And then I'm going to multiply the second line by negative 2. So negative, uh, sorry negative 2x um, minus 8y equals negative 144. So negative 7y equals negative 96. And divide, you get y equals, sorry, y equals negative 13.714. We still need the x value. Plug it back into either one of these equations. You're going to get I'm just going to write it down for you, x equals 17.143. Um, so you have to solve the system sometimes, um, just like we did in the, in the last few sections, to find that intersection. So this intersection is 17.143, and, uh, sorry, why is positive? Positive 13.714. Okay, so we found our corners. After that, we plug them into the, um, the uh, objective quantity, and we'll see which of these combinations of legs give us the greatest profit. But hang on a second. We aren't going to make and sell partial table legs. That just doesn't make sense. So you have to figure out what point you want to use. You could use, um, if you had 17, that would go with um, a y of 13. You have to look at what point fits inside there, and 17, 13 fits inside there. Or you could use 16 um, and 14, because 13.7 is closer to 14. So 
You could use either of these combinations as that point right there when we're trying to figure out the table legs. So we're, we're going to use both of these to plug in and see which one helps maximize the profit. Alright, so we're just going to plug each x and y into our profit statement. Well, if I don't make any table legs, I'm not going to make any money. If we make 24 plain and no fancy, we will have 72 bucks. If we make zero plain and 18 fancy, we will have 90 bucks. If we make 16 plain and 14 fancy, we would get $118. And if we made 17 plain and 13 fancy, we would make $116. So, now we know that the maximum amount we should make is this right here. We can make $118 in a day if we, uh, if we make 16 plain table legs and 14 fancy table legs. So write out that sentence and then you're done. 16 plain table legs and 14 fancy table legs should be produced in order to maximize profit. The end. Have a good night.